I'm attempting to complete every single GameCube game, and I'm using a random number generator to pick the next game. Last episode, we raced tiny cars and big environments in Micro Machines, and this episode, we go and hang out with Jimmy Neutron as he saves the world in Attack of the Twonkies. Jimmy Neutron Attack of the Twonkies was released September 13th, 2004, and was developed by THQ and published by Nickelodeon and THQ. This game was fun, but it got a little old after a while. Before we get started, make sure to like this video because it really helps out the channel, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss out on any future games. Without further ado, this is my experience with Jimmy Neutron Attack of the Twonkies. In Jimmy Neutron Attack of the Twonkies, we're going to go through the new game to consider this one complete. The game starts with a cutscene to set up the plot of visiting a comet. This is done like an episode of the show and has all the same voice actors. It even kind of looks like the cartoon. I immediately started to remember all the characters' names and how they act. They introduce you to Carl, Sheen, Cindy, and Libby. I was taken back to my childhood with this cutscene. The gameplay of this game is a 3D platformer with some interactive environments. Jimmy's able to jump, walk, and interact with objects. The fun part of this game is that you can find items around each level, and you can create inventions that let you advance further into the level and some of them are just for fun to mess around with and I couldn't find like really any use for them it was just cool to have. The first thing we invented was shoes and pens so we could leave a trail on the ground. I don't think this did anything but it was pretty cool. After we get through our secret lab we talked to Carl and Sheen about going to the comet and they both say they're too busy to come and they cannot come with us to the comet. How sad. At the end of each level, you get points for inventions, pickups, objectives, and expiration. Then based on these points, it gives you a rating for the episode. We got an A in the first mission of the game. We're the best. The next mission has us flying in our spaceship with our robotic dog, Goddard, avoiding asteroids. This was pretty fun. We arrive on Twonkis 3, which is the comet, and we find the first boss of the game. We have no way to beat this boss currently, so we have to make our mad dash to our spaceship to get away from trouble. Once we get back to Earth, we meet up with Carl and Sheen again, and find out we have a creature with us, called a Twonky. They're little alien things that get bigger and more mean as they grow in size. Music and sounds cause them to grow big and start running rampant on the city. We're in the school now, and we have to honey I shrank the kids and make ourselves small to escape the room we're in. Don't know why we can't just move the desk, but it is what it is. Next, we become the bully instead of being bully and drop books on Butch's head. This would hurt really bad if you were in that situation, and honestly, it's not the right way, kids. Don't drop books on kids that bully you. That's mean. Once we get to the neighborhood, we're going to vacuum up the Twonkies by inventing this machine. This is when the game turns into Pokemon and we have to catch them all. We head over to our best pal Sheen's house and find out that his terrible singing causes the bigger Twonkies to go back to their baby forms. This gives Jimmy an idea and we invent this machine that plays his voice and allows for us to go around town and make the big Twonkies collectible. I'm a sucker for collecting things in games, so of course I had to get all the Twonkies in each episode of this game. The Sheenograph works by pointing at the Twonkies for a period of time and they will eventually shrink in size. It's pretty simple. On to the first boss of the game. These bosses are giant Twonkies and normal means don't work on them. So we have to create items to deal with them. The first boss flies around in a cloud and shoots lightning at us. Our invention uses his lightning and hits him with it, allowing for us to do massive damage. This boss fight is easy. You just have to avoid the tornadoes that he shoots at you, and eventually, we land the final hit and take him out. The next episode takes place in the major part of town, where the milkshake place is and a music equipment store. The only thing of note in this level is that we invent a jetpack, and the game turns into almost a side-scroller, where we have to get up to the top of a building to save Cindy from a bunch of Twonkies. What a strange name for an alien creature. The next part takes us into the park to help Carl. But I had this cutscene take place where the Twonky was still attacking me while it was like, I couldn't move and there was, the character was talking to me. Super weird. Think this is a bug? 
I don't think it should happen. Once we find Carl's glasses, he jumps on a llama and we have to help him get all the llamas back into their pen. Then he gives us the key to get to the next area. Why couldn't he have just given us the key? Carl, you're a jerk. We then take a lawnmower and mow over a bunch of holes in the ground that the Twonkies are hiding in, and finally get to the next boss. The next boss is a fan of ice and likes to freeze you in place. We invent ice skating shoes and a machine that shoots hockey pucks at the Twonky using conveniently placed ramps. This boss fight was sort of difficult because he loves to freeze you and it does some pretty good damage to you. But taking our time, we take care of the boss with no problem. The next episode takes us to the amusement park because every game has to have an amusement park level. Am I right? This one doesn't have much to note either. It's more of the same stuff. We arrive to an arcade and we have to play a bunch of classic games to earn tickets to ride the roller coaster. I'm not sure how this works, but I'm good with it. Some of the classics we got to play were Brick Breaker, some dungeon running game, which is the only game I couldn't pinpoint what it was supposed to be, Asteroid, Frogger while using a squirrel, and last we got to play Galica, which probably my favorite out of the ones we got to pick. We get this cutscene on our way to the next boss, which is the scariest roller coaster ride of all time. And then we meet the next boss. This boss is afraid of light and it damages it. So we have to create this invention that blows holes in the ceiling. And if the lights hit the boss, then it gets damaged. If it's not in the light, however, he recovers his health. So you kind of just have to corner him. It's pretty easy. This is probably the easiest boss fight in the game. Uh, we eventually trap him and then the boss fight is over. That's pretty much it. We also save Ultra Lord because Sheen asks us to. He's a pretty terrible hero to look up to. The last episode takes place in a radio station. More of the same, collecting Twonkies, moving from room to room. The only thing to note here is that at one point you're using like recording studio, like a booth. You have to change the color of what music single is going into the room. I don't really know how to explain it. Uh, but it's like a soundboard that you're moving up and down and then you have to like put the sheen graph through it and it takes them out. This is pretty different, but I really like that they try to change up the gameplay at this point. Once we clear out the radio station, we go down to the local hockey rink where this band is playing with the ice sill on the floor. I don't really understand that, but okay. And we get one final boss fight because all of the Twonkies that we have in our bag get out and become one giant boss. This boss fight is a mix of all the bosses we faced so far. So it does all the same stuff, the darkness, the lightning, uh, the ice. So you kind of just have to switch between what you're using as it switches its forms. We take it out and it explodes for one last time. We finally save the town from the Twonkies. We're a hero. Then our friends conveniently come back and are like, hey, Jimmy, you good? And we're like, yeah, well, yeah, I'm all right. We get one last cutscene that shows one little Twonky leave Sheen's bag, and the game says the end, or is it? With a question mark. How mysterious. I don't think there was ever plans for a sequel for this, though. I don't know how well this game did. The credits roll right after this, and that's the game. Would I recommend this? I mean, it's not a bad game. It just kind of gets old after a little bit of playing it. If you want to revisit the world of Jimmy Neutron, then go for it. But that's the end. If you want to know what game is next, stick around. But if not, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And we'll see you in the next one. And uh, on the count of three, we'll generate and see what is next. Three? Or we'll do it one, two, three. So one, two, three. Four, ninety-six. Which is... Oh, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. Fuck. Just getting reamed. Ah, uh, yeah, so Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell is our next game. So that should be fun.